absolutely sure that this is going to be an engaging and exciting piece of content just as it was with all our previous speakers i think we're blessed with amazing speakers it's truly a fantastic collection of diamonds today so before we start i think we all need just a little little round of you know emotional um how do i better put that we do need a little bit of an emotional um encouragement for patricia and for ourselves because this is the very last session for today i'm sure a lot of you guys have already felt that you're overwhelmed with uh, information and fantastic tips and tricks that you have heard from our experts so let's just send a round of welcome to patricia in the chat let's say that we are very much excited to see her and to welcome her as a part of our ice spring days 2023 conference so share your small emotional comment in the chat or maybe just an emoji that would be just good go 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 patricia says thank james you. he's still with us with from the very first session thank you so much fantastic. Uh, yes fantastic that sounds really really great all right we are looking forward to seeing patricia and i haven't had a chance to exchange some small talk with her so i'd like to ask patricia how are you today I'm doing great. Thanks, Chris. It's been quite an amazing, wonderful, value-packed learning day uh, following the sessions. Uh, and I'm thrilled to be able to share with all of you watching. And when I turn this way, I'll be checking some of the uh, chat questions as well, just to, to let you know that why I'm looking to my side. So I'm happy to be here, Chris. And to all of you, thanks for being here as well. Of course, Patricia, don't worry if you need, I'll be there for you to read all Thank the you. YouTube questions. If you need me, of course, I'll be there. And without further ado, I yield the floor to Patricia. Thank you very much. So welcome everyone to this session. We're gonna talk about bringing creativity and innovation to the workplace learning or training uh, context. My name is Patricia Regeer. I have a Master of Adult Education. I'm with Regeer Education. And I'm really excited to be sharing ways that we can turn an audience into participant. Uh, to participants. So even though you're watching through a live stream, the chat has been really, really engaging. And I'm thrilled about that too. So there will be opportunities to connect that way as well throughout the presentation. Um, so we're going to talk about how do we build in creativity and innovation into our workplace training. We want people to want to attend our training sessions and um, and to learn what we want to share. So I'm would really love to hear from you right away in chat. What are you hoping to learn in this session? If you can type, I'll take a look as well as some of it comes through. And just like we ask questions in, you know, right away we're getting a response. Sometimes when we ask a question with our audience and we're wanting them to turn into participants, we might be hearing something like this, or it feels like that in our head that we are just hearing crickets. Uh, but this group, we have a lot of engagement right away. And that is fantastic because we can do a lot to build in an engaging space but it also depends on those that are joining us, what they want to bring to the space as well. But part of it is how we facilitate and set um, up the experience. So as was already uh, talked about in the very first um, session with James, talking about that learning experience journey and the design that we're implementing, it starts before we even start our learning experiences, training or workshops or online courses. And so it's before, during and after, and I'll be touching on some of that as well. And part of that is starting right away with setting the stage, that people feel welcome, feel included and supported. So part of that is the communication that we send ahead of time. Now that can be in innovative and creative ways. We could be sending out a little mini video tutorial explaining how to use the engagement tools and then making sure as people join us that they know how, you know, we're going to be communicating through the chat 
or other ways that uh, they can participate, whether it's a live session or it's something that's self-directed learning. We definitely want to be communicating how people can navigate the space and experience the information and feel um, represented, included, um, and, and safe because we are, um, as James mentioned too at the beginning of today, some of the past experiences that people have are going to be impacting how hesitant they are and how trusting they are. So we have to build that in through the communications before, during, and after that people feel heard and seen and part of the experience as well. So that might be if it is a live session, sending messages into the waiting room or having uh, a waiting room video or, you know, there's a lot of ways depending on what is the context that you're working with. iSpring Solutions has a lot of very um, wonderful, innovative ways to build in that inclusive experience and make sure that we're communicating what people need to know as well. Now, reaching through the camera, um, that is something that we're responsible for, whether we're creating a video that someone is watching later. If you're watching this during the, um, the re recording replays or if you're creating content for self-directed learning course, our energy level and enthusiasm can come through the, the camera. And when we're starting creating our our materials, we might feel pretty awkward, um, whether you're starting this or you've been doing this for a long time. My first YouTube videos was awkward, <laughs> but we don't get to the place where we're comfortable without going through that, you know, just putting ourselves out there and practicing. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different ways. And if we're live in person on site, there, we're not on camera, but there's ways that we can be very inviting and make sure that that, you know, whether it's humor, uh, depending on the topic that we're talking about, that we're excited about it. Even if it's health and safety policies, we can be engaging about the materials as well. So I'm wondering what sparks your interest in the learning material when you're training, when you're attending a session, whether it's webinar style or an online course um, or you're in the you know a, a workshop in the same room as everyone else what gets you engaged and i'm going to look at the chat here to um, create a demo uh, james is talking about so i'm going to add stories jason says what else how um how it will help you do your job right that it's applicable it's meaningful content that you care about um, Susan says how it will help me do my job better as well. Um, that's great. And real live experiences. Yes, yeah, stories. Um, the pacing is important. That's true. Stories. Uh, Abby says as well. Can real world tips and deep thought about the content relatable? These are we have a great group here. Uh, so we're going to learn just as much from everybody in the chat as we are through this content as well. And and so I, and I appreciate that. And that's part of respecting adult learners, that they are coming to the table with knowledge and experience and um, examples and stories as well. So we need to be including everyone in the material um, and be intentional about that as well. Um, I'm also the author of the book, The Online Shift. Just a year ago, I published this, um, so it's pretty uh, exciting still for me. This is a quote from the book as well, because we we definitely need to be intentional. And when we're on camera, sometimes we have to almost, in a very authentic way, bring it up a notch. Um, and everyone's going to have their own approach and style. We can't always copy someone, but we can be inspired by um, each other as well when we're we're building our training. And we're as learning and development uh, L&D specialists or, you know, the range from facilitators, leaders, designers, the whole range of everybody that's involved, um, technology, producers, everybody we come from a variety of contexts and we're working in a variety of contexts um, in the workplace uh, training space or 
and might be other contexts as well. So some of those contexts of what we're talking about, and there's different innovative and creative ways that we can uh, work within these contexts. It might, when we say hybrid, that could be a blended audience online and offline at the same time, or it could be a blended program where some of the program is self-directed learning and some of it is live together collaborative space uh, as well. So all of these different spaces in, um, you know, whether it's group uh, or individual, there's different ways we can be innovative in those different spaces. So there's different things we need to consider. So I'm going to ask you, with all of those complex, different contexts and needs, what are some things that spring to mind that might be different, whether it's in person or I call it on site because we're in person right now virtually as well, um, or if it is the, the online context or a, a blended pro, um, context where some people are in the same room physically and some people are online, that's a whole other ball game um, as well. So what springs to mind it, that we need to consider if it's these different contexts. I'm going to ask from you because you have a lot of experience as well. So, and we'll give it a second because of that delay. That's one of the considerations that we can have as well is knowing the context we're, we're working with. Does sound work? Does, um, you know, how are people hearing it and receiving the the um, experience in the context of a live stream or in the same room of the platform you're using or that self-directed learning um, like with ice spring solutions and the fantastic courses uh, in that context so All i'm right. taking a look um and i don't know if you have some thoughts as well chris that uh any context that or considerations that we have to think about for these different types of sure. situations. I just did want to jump in for a second to illustrate yes. one more opportunity um, of online formats to be engaging when we have dialogues between people, which is definitely much more engaging than just a monologue. Not to say monologue was beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I just wanted to lead to one idea, which is, again, my passion personally. I do believe that uh, the diversity and variety of different cultures and nationalities makes our life much more brighter and much more meaningful. So I do believe that when it comes to online and hybrid formats, to me, it's always a fantastic opportunity to bring my international colleagues on board and make our room more diverse. So whenever we come across online or hybrid context, I think it's very important to keep in mind that it, there comes an opportunity and the challenge of an international group at the same time. Right. No, I appreciate that, Chris. And you're um, you're right too when it's two people talking to each other, and it's not just lecture style, not just you know presentation. Just hear me on the stage. That we're including everybody and in hearing from different voices on a mic or in chat. Um, and there's some great things, um, and we we can go through the chat as well when we're going back to i'm not sure if that's going to be part of the replay experience but that's something to think about you know there's all these different um nuances or uh, things that we need to think about for each context is going to be unique so just looking you know hybrid hardly you know can, can't get everyone in the same room um diversity multicultural generationals that's wonderful too different levels of ability with technology there's so many things to consider to make sure that we're we're including everyone in the space and i'm definitely going to be going back through um, that chat as well uh, because you are bringing in a lot of great ideas into the space and there's going to be more opportunity to um, engage with you as well but i love the the conversation that's happening there too M online multitasking absolutely that is uh susan you know one of the things we have learned so many skills whether you jumped into this three years ago or you've been doing this i've been doing this a lot longer um, but the amount of innovation and creativity over the last three years has been extremely exciting and people that resisted trying these new things had to so i love that uh, this is another quote from my book and this is something really important that i emphasize 
with all the clients I worked with over the last three, six years, um, to, that people don't have to be perfect, especially when we're trying something new, a great new innovative tool. Oh, this would create some engagement. And the first time trying anything, it's not necessarily going to be perfect, even with tech checks and practice runs. There's some, you know, variables that we don't know are going to come up sometimes uh, and rolling with it and being able to embrace that is part of then we can get even more creative. Now, um, I've been giving a few uh, workshops recently about pick your own adventure um, in that, you know, flexible facilitation participant led experiences. And I kind of, it's been a theme for me too, whether it's my virtual course or in the book, where I wanted people to be able to jump around as to the topics and the pro tips that were relevant to you in that moment. But we can build in an element of that into even self-directed learning sometimes um, and into the, our learning spaces. So yesterday with the workshop, I gave the the option, do they want this, act, want me to talk about this or they do you want me to talk about that? So sometimes we can build that in and be ready to talk about either topic or if your course and your training materials don't have to be in a particular logical order, that can be a lot of fun. It can build in some excitement for us as facilitators and trainers. It can build in something unexpected um, for our participants as well. Uh, but and it also helps us build that resiliency. If something does go unexpectedly, not the way we hoped or planned, or a, a speaker or trainer doesn't show up, that we have things in our pocket or our delayed because of technical issues. Um, so building in choice can build in that fun um, and it's one way to inspire that engagement as well and especially with adult learners that we want um, you know to have choice can make a difference to getting involved as well and uh, when I was sharing this this workshop workshop recently um, and I want to hear from you from the group we have over 200 people here. What have you experienced where there's eye rolls um, or the, you know, it's definitely written on people's faces that they don't want to be there or do that particular activity. Tell me in the chat, what has evoked that response uh, from your learners or your team, um, uh, your participants? And I'll give you a second for that as we see that coming in um, and hear if there's anything else that springs to mind. Role plays, absolutely. Everyone uh, but me hates role plays. They're very effective for the learning process. Um, uh, partner activities, too much on a slide to read, absolutely. Um, team projects appreciate hearing from you all the different uh, different things that springs to mind. I remember over 10 years ago providing um, health and safety training and infection prevention training and the eye rolls. Now it's a different context now I think of how people care about those topics but at that point people are like whatever this does not impact us. So sometimes we're also teaching on things that don't feel as relevant but they are still really important. So making them as engaging as possible. With role plays, it might be having two different scenarios or having your participants help build the scenario and the, the uh, case study. Uh, with breakout room groups, it's really important that we warm up the group, that they feel safe with each other uh, as well. So there's a lot of different things that we can help with choices uh, as a way to be creative and innovative and, um, you know, having slides that reach you. I've got in, in chat there, Jennifer saying an actor in the house. Yes, somebody can get very exuberant um, or, uh, you know, so there's a lot of different, you know, working in pairs. There's a lot of different things that can bring on the eye rolls and the, oh, I don't want to be doing this. And then we have to build in some ways to 
to get it more exciting um, as well. And I've got a couple things up on at the same time. So since my virtual background went here, I'm just going to do that. Uh, and so that's another way, you know, I'm just bringing something creative into the space, something a little bit different. That's my LinkedIn um, profile. So some flexible facilitation. When things go the way they go, I often will take things that don't go perfectly as great opportunities, especially when I'm working with facilitators and trainers. It's you know, beautiful content. Okay. How, what are our backup plans? What can we do differently next time? It's rich learning. Um, that's always relevant, uh, as well. But when I first talk about flexible facilitation, that can make some people excited because it's bringing a new flavor into what you do, but it can also be a little scary when we're giving it up to choice, our participants, or sometimes I'll use the name picker wheel and okay, what's the topic we're gonna to talk about today? And it brings in that unexpected, it can be very exciting for the group. For some of your participants, that might not be exciting where they like to know what's going to happen. So you also need to know your group a little bit and that's, you know, the tricky thing, we can't cater everything to one person or leave one person out, but we adding the variety is going to be really important in that participant choice. Um, and, you know, having your your group decide some of where it's going to go, have them be part of the the creation experience sometimes, you know, it get some ideas from people that don't create content uh, and see what happens as well. And the more you learn to play with a new tool, we we might become saturated sometimes, learning saturated with technology is ever changing. There's always something new to learn or a new tool that we could bring into it. The It can be tiring. And there's times where we do have to take a break. Um, just like pauses are really important in a learning day, um, it, we need to take a pause sometimes too. But you don't have to learn everything all at once um, or or do everything, but it's important that we do try something, that we're always stretching ourselves a little bit so that we stay creative and innovative. And that do definitely does take some courage uh, as well. But speaking of variety, we have a variety in our group right now online and um, in our groups that we're, we're teaching, we're facilitating and training or developing content for. And there's a variety of ways we can layer engagement um, as well, because we have a variety of people in uh, that we're working with. And how many of you have heard of um, Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences. Many of you may have put in in chat if you have some thoughts. Um, but wherever you, you know, are with with using that as a tool, definitely people have a variety of ways they like to communicate, that they like to receive information, that they like to um, engage with the information as well. And sometimes as our as facilitators or trainers or designers, we might cater to the way we like to receive information. It might not spring to mind to create a crossword puzzle or word search as something just a little different. Um, and so, you know, finding out the way you like to do things might be another way you can be intentional on trying other ways as well and bringing in those other layers of just something a little bit different um, as well. So it might be with sounds, uh, as I brought in, you know, something as little as unexpected as crickets, um, you know, coming up. It could be stories um, and, you know, music, uh, hearing each other's experiences, different voices, um, and, and video as well. And with visuals, you know, there's video stories, examples, props, taking a closer look at, you know, what you could bring in that might be just add that little bit of extra that makes it meaningful to the content. Content, It's adding um, and enriching the experience. If you're um, 
So, you know, there's a variety of different ways, description, seeing and imagining something. An activity is going to be really important. Um, what's been mentioned throughout the day uh, and at the beginning with James as well, that that doing something, clicking something, I'm asking you to type into chat. Um, when we're on other platforms, we can be doing all kinds of other things. When you're building, whether it's with iSpring um, solutions as well, you're able to have things where you have to click and it's not just passive sitting back and experiencing it in, you know, one dimensional. So if you're in person, you might be, you know, having things with uh, like, um, these are thumb balls and, and Play-Doh I've brought to a lot of in-person workshops. And, and it's even with adults, all ages and stages, some people are very tactile and enjoy that fun little uh, unexpected aspect while we're focusing on the content uh, as well. And the activities can be fun, uh, can build that trust with, with your group, but it can also be very meaningful and applicable to the content as well. And building in, in that social, so that people are comfortable with each other, breakout rooms and discussions, small group and large group, uh, flip chart paper or, you know, whiteboards and annotation online, the whole range that you can, even if you have self-directed learning courses, you know, we're, we're hopefully past the days where we've just hand a policy binder to somebody um, talking about it. How is this content, as was mentioned in the chat too, how is this meaningful and applies to their job? What, you know, what difference does this make that they, uh, that the person learns this is really important. Why should a person care uh, that we think of that as well? And, you know, having fun is something that's possible with learning. And there are other ways that we can add engagement as well. I have um, a learning, uh, you know, quiz based on multiple intelligences out of that curiosity and additional resources of how you might like uh, to learn as well. So it's just a free resource on my website too. And I like to offer a lot of content to um, to just help and aid. Uh, and I have uh, videos about iSpring on my YouTube channel too. And it was um, so, you know, they're having resources in a variety of different ways. I like to share that and demonstrate that, whether it's a podcast. So these are examples too where you can get inspired on even what people are doing in businesses of how you can build that into workplace learning as well. So always keeping in mind confidentiality. Um, you know, sometimes we can get stuck as leaders in a workplace or agency or organization of what could go wrong and focusing on that. It's important to look at everything, unpack everything, but not let it stop us from being creative or innovative. So you might have in-house a little, you know, a uh, video challenge of teaching about a particular policy, uh, you know, and you can have rules and parameters and boundaries around it, but having some fun uh, and building something in that's creative and gets everyone involved can really make a difference. So it's about the content, but it's also about that journey and how people are feeling before, during, and after um, a learning experience of what you're wanting people to learn, to have that knowledge transfer that people remember and care to remember as well. So I'm gonna look at chat here too, um, using different platforms. We've got mentioned here too, and that's great. There's so many, there's Menti, Mural, all of these different, um, things that we're using right now, AHA Slides was used earlier today, that we can we use these creative tools to aid the engagement. And I'm going to be showing some of uh, the characters that are part of iSprings too, that we can bring faces to examples and case studies and things that we're building into, whether it's self-directed learning, uh, like with iSpring or, uh, you know, the in-person, in the same room, at your workplace, and in a meeting. And how, you know, sometimes too, and I might just do this right now as well, um, is just to throw in something unexpected. 
sometimes you could have a meeting if you know right now we're using zoom and i as and i have a t video tutorial on my youtube channel about how you can create your own uh zoom avatar i love that they included this my mouth is moving how awesome is that it's even moving my hair a little bit but it's you know sometimes people don't want to be on camera so what if you taught people how to do that um, and have one meeting off camera. We're not having to look into the camera constantly so people are feeling seen. Uh, we're able to just kind of sit back and hear each other and experience the space a little bit differently. Uh, so, you know, and it's so it's adding some fun. It might not be everybody's cup of tea. I am a tea drinker, not a coffee drinker. Uh, but, uh, you know, so even with the, the flavors and variety that we add to our learning spaces, we can try to make sure that we're including everybody that might like to try something different or it might be stretching comfort zones, but that's okay. As long as people are feeling safe and part of that not feeling safe sometimes is not knowing how to do something and feeling that they're gonna look dumb or appear dumb or you know be silly. One of the recent videos that I created, and I've got a couple of them on my YouTube channel that felt silly. It felt that was stretching for me, um, but I was trying something new and it didn't look always, you know, perfectly polished or, per you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it it stretches my learning, my creativity when I try something different. Um, and uh, so one of the recent videos I had these thought bubbles coming in and I was looking around. So I filmed myself just looking around and then with editing, I added these things and that might not be your thing, but what can you do that might feel a little strange or, or weird, but it's kind of something fun, maybe hopefully <laughs> for those watching the video and learning through it um, as well. So, oh, and that's, We'll go back to uh, a regular me. <laughs> um, so, you know, part of this is shifting our audience into participants requires being intentional uh, through the experience that we are facilitating and creating um, as well. And um, I'm going to get that off the screen. Uh, so part of it, too, is having you know, thinking about what sparks our interest to be creative and innovative when we're creating content or facilitating an experience. I'm, I would love to hear from you. What sparks your engagement first as a facilitator, trainer, designer, leader um, for thinking about how are you going to, as small as a learning, uh, a teachable moment when something goes wrong in the workplace to a formal training that you've developed. What what gets you excited to create that? And I'll give you a moment to to write that in the chat. So, um, I I in the chat is I think it's fun can depend on what the audience as well can be generational. Absolutely, it can be cultural. Great point of you know, what one person is thinks is fun, another person eye rolls. You're absolutely right. So there's a bit of a balance, but sometimes it's okay to try something and see, even if people feel resistant, and as long as it's not too resistant where people feel unsafe, but maybe after trying something or experiencing something, there might be a change of opinion about it as well, but great points. Uh, required to learn new technical skills, can be creative too. Yeah, trying different things. Um, creating YouTube videos for me is a creative outlet. It's a way I can serve and add value, but it also keeps me, you know, not just in my own space. It, it's putting myself out there, which can be a plus. Uh, uh, Abby writes, love to learn new things gets you, you excited about learning, which is great. And I think in we're in the industry of learning. We love learning, um, uh, which is really good. But sometimes we can get a little tired too of it. So we'll see as more things come in. And I'm also curious, what lights up um, your participants' creativity, do you think, or uh, sparks their 
interests to be part of the creative process? What do you think would would help that as well? Oh, may I jump in here yes, while we're please. waiting? Chris. Right. Yes. I feel that whenever participants come to my workshop and they see that this is a zone where it's safe to experiment and be silly, while I start sometimes being silly and showing that it's all very possible, you don't need to be so restrained and you can be a bit more relaxed. This opens up a very small window in their busy um, corporate lifestyle where they actually can be themselves and not to be afraid to reveal their own creativity. That's great. That Thank you for that, uh, Chris. That's a great point. Being a little vulnerable of not being perfect and being silly or whatever it is can really open up the space. So thanks for sharing that. That's a really great point and important thing for us to keep in mind that we don't have to be perfect all the time or be vulnerable. Um, also, a uh, circle of care, learning and development, trying out new techniques and apps and tech gamification. Uh, James writes, you know, invite people to talk about their favorite band and music. Sometimes it can be not related, um, but it can spark something uh, as well. Uh, Tony writes, I like to create interaction. Uh, so I'm definitely going to be going through your chat uh, to to, you know, see what else uh, you shared. And thank you for doing that as well. One other thing that we think of, we've talked about some of the before, some of the during, and after a learning experience, whether it's a self-directed course or a meeting, something you talked about and a policy that was learned, um, or a you know full workshop, learning boosters. So I have a, a resource I'm gonna be sharing with you as well, sort of a snapshot of some ideas. That's a one page, can remind you because uh, there's so much rich learning over these couple of days and I'm, I'm really thankful to iSpring of creating this space for all of us to learn together. I'm going to be sharing that resource, but we can think of different ways and get creative with those learning boosters, I call them, of, of just reminders or sometimes when someone's forgotten in the team and you don't want to center out one person, you might have a little you know, little video reminder, oh, this came up in my day today, it made me think of, I'm going to highlight this for us because it was really came into, um, you know, being relevant in a meeting I was in today. And there's different ways that we can bring the learning in a very non-confrontational way sometimes too, when someone needs to learn something as well. And I encourage you when you're developing, when you're implementing, to think about the five W's and the H. Remember back in school, if you had to do that with writing sometimes, you know, of, you know, where are you getting the resources and the, the time uh, to plan, implement? Uh, what resources do you need? How will, what will you need to create to teach someone how to use that new, you know, uh, participation tool uh, as well? Who is your audience? What are the accessibility needs? Uh, what, you know, that's a really important thing as well. So, you know, on the screen right now, I have all the, the words, uh, where, how, what, when, why, who, um, on the, the screen as a picture. Some pictures we need to describe if we are using a chart that, uh, you know, we're thinking about all these different details of what we need to add to make sure everyone's included. So with a chart that illustrate, illustrates something, we need to have words, not just the colors, just in case someone can't distinguish between colors. So there's so many little things that are not little to the person that it impacts, but um, details that we need to think about. And that can feel daunting. It's great to then collaborate together, invite your team what's missing, and then be really open. Oh, thank you for telling me that. I'm definitely going to work on that and add that to the next thing. Um, and just being intentional and continually hearing people and, and growing in our way of how we we share. So I'm going to just go through a couple more things and get, open it up for um, questions and answers. So I talk about um, five different ways of the learning experience journey and pathway uh, in, in my resources. And there's so many options um, as well. These are characters from iSpring and I love to see the diversity of what 
um, is being included, but we want people to talk about the learning experiences in a positive way, in a deep way. Um, and I want to hear from you, what is some of the best learning from today, uh, from this session? It could, I'm sure there's a, a lot of learning from all the sessions. We're getting to the end of an amazing day, and it's going to take something to unpack. But I'm going to invite you to um, to use the QR code, or we're going to put the link into the uh, into chat as well. Or you can go to menti.com with the code eight one nine eight three seven nine seven, and tell me what you learned uh, from this session. Then we're going to be wrapping up, answering questions, um, and getting to to the wrap up. And it takes a moment sometimes for those to come in. You're, there's a delay for you to hear me. There's a delay for um, it to get from what you're putting in into onto the slide. Uh, so we have to have patience. And sometimes, oh, we're seeing our first one, uh, digital avatar. Um, so, you know, there's patience and it can be nerve wracking when something doesn't feel like it's connecting or working and, oh, I've tried something new. I don't want that to ever discourage us from trying a new thing again and again, because um, sometimes, so it's okay not not be perf, uh, perfect. Social learning is important. It definitely is. Uh, cur, uh, results. Uh, and, and then as the word um, gets input uh, over and over again, it, it will get bigger too. And what I will do is share this on a post as well on my LinkedIn. What did everybody come up with with this word cloud um, from the best learning or things that you're going to try? I would let you know that can be part of the best learning is something that's sparked uh, for yourself as well. So I'm loving seeing all of this because uh, we have almost 200 people in um in watching this right now and more that's going to watch it later on so i'm going to keep this live so that i can uh share that in a post in my linkedin and uh we're going to wrap this uh up right away as well and let's just see here so i'm going to move i know whoa <laughs> all right so um and what I would like for you to do is take the opportunity. This is the resource I'm going to share that might be in a follow up uh, communications as well. And um, and thank you very much for being part of this. I've got one more slide after this. That's just fun to see. So we can be wrapping it up, Chris, or answering any of your questions at this point um, as well. So thank you so much and enjoy the creative process going forward. Oh, thank you, Patricia. I really enjoyed your presentation. And I wouldn't even say your presentation, I would just say experience, because yes. it was indeed an experience. We did have all sorts of activities, starting from sounds to visual effects, and indeed, uh, also our own engagement and participation. I personally also participated in all your activities. So you got me there, you hooked me. So uh, I really, really do appreciate everything you've just shared with us. And if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to send them right now we've got about three more minutes until we have to say um not farewell but goodbye to patricia she will always be inside our hearts and of course uh for those who are interested i can see patricia has um a photo with her book would you like to say a couple of words about it uh sure thank you for the opportunity it's called the online shift 101 pro tips for virtual uh, like online facilitators workplace trainers virtual speakers uh it's available on amazon and um I, i'll put a post on my linkedin so you don't have to go looking for it but uh, it's it's a great great little book that um i'm really really proud of and pleased with so thank you Aww. Nice. We've got Dane asking about where to get the book and Susan has already answered that. Oh, sorry. Abby has already answered that she just got it off Amazon. So, um, right. Yeah. So Patricia, I can't but resist. I, I really, really want to ask you a question. Um, while probably our, our participants are just typing it, taking time to type it, type their questions. You know, you've shown us so many wonderful, engaging ways for a virtual trainer and a host or a, a lecturer to, uh, make sure you're there, interact with their audience, but how do we make sure that it's efficiently done? Like, how do we track if these methods have actually been impactful? 
Oh, thank you. That's uh, I appreciate that question. Checking in with whether it's evaluations or informal conversations, being in tune to the energy of the room. If you're in mm -hmm. uh, the same room or even online, we can pick that up. If, if there's crickets put on, you know, if you have the option of putting on the crickets, mm -hmm. um, but trying different uh, ways to pull it out of people and set up that um, safe and, you know, engaging experience but then being intentional and asking the questions to see is it making a difference, what needs to change, and just really having that open uh, conversation opportunity, you know, to opportunity in a variety of different ways, whether it's you can and any questions coming out of this too, you can message me through LinkedIn or there's different ways to contact me as well um, if questions come later. But thank you for that question, Chris. Absolutely. Well, sort of I <laughs> Right, right, absolutely. So Patricia, thank you so much. I can only see very grateful comments so far. Like this was a great job. Thank you so much, Patricia. This was wonderful, et cetera, et cetera. So this was just amazing to hear those comments from the audience in the end, which again, once again, reaffirms us that it's been really, really helpful to get all those little tricks and tips and um, engagements inside your presentation.